السلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا أحييكم بتحية الإسلام السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته نود إن شاء الله أن نشرع في ذكر حديث النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فيما روى فيما رواه فيما وراه فيما فيما رواه او الذي رواه عبد الله بن عمرو قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قد افلح من اسلم ورزق كفافا وقنعه الله بما اتاه النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم في هذا الحديث أن فلاح المسلم إذا قاد لربه ورضي بما قدر الله له تعالى من رزق ولو كان الرزق كفافا أي بما يكفيه لا زيادة فيه فالكفاف في الرزق أي قدر ما يسد الحاجة ويغني الإنسان عن السؤال ويغني الإنسان عن السؤال أي لا يسأل الناس فالمسلم القانع بما قسم الله له لا يسأل الناس شيئا وهذه بيعة النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم للصحابة أن لا تسألوا الناس شيئا والمسلم القانع بحق لا يقلق ولا يتأفف ولا ينظر لمن هو فوقه بل هو مكتف راض بما قدر الله له ولذلك قال النبي وقنعه الله بما آتاه نعم so after praising Allah and sending the salat wa salam upon the messenger, then the shaykh began by the hadith narrated to us from Abdullah ibn Amr radiallahu anhu, in which the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, which means, indeed, the one who is successful is who has submitted, meaning he entered, it, he entered into Islam and he was provided with what is sufficient for him, and he is content with what Allah gave him. And I'll just repeat that hadith again because it is the, the foundation with, of what the Sheikh is explaining. So the Prophet وسلم, said, which means that indeed the, per, the one who is successful is who submits, meaning to Islam, he is provided with that which is sufficient for him, and he is content with what Allah has given him. And so the Muslim, in explanation of this hadith, then the success of a Muslim is in submitting to his Lord and being pleased with the truth and being pleased with what Allah the Most High has provided him with, even if that provision is only what is sufficient for him. And this word, kafaf, or sufficiency and provision, it means that you, the, the person is given the amount which is sufficient for him, sufficient for his needs, and provides him with enough that he does not need to ask from the people, that he does not need to ask from the people. So the Muslim who is content with what Allah has distributed for him and decreed for him, he doesn't ask from the people anything. As the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, La tas nasa shay'an, don't ask from the people anything. And, the, and the, <clears throat> the Muslim who is content in truth, he does not become sad or depressed and regretful in looking at those who are above him, those who have more than him in provision. As the Prophet ﷺ said, look to those who are lower than you from among you 
And don't look to those who are higher than you in provision. So be, for indeed it is more befitting or it is more, uh, it will be more inclining for you that you do not look down upon the blessings of Allah upon you. No. ولذلك قال الله عز وجل عن صفة المؤمن أنه لا يأسى على ما فاته ما فاته من فرص من أرباح أو ما شابه ذلك فهو ينظر إلى الأمام So also the, uh, Allah described in the Quran those who are not regretful about what they don't receive. Those who are not regretful about what they don't receive. Meaning you, the believer should not become sad or depressed from what they think would have been missed opportunities or missed profits. So that you do not become saddened by what you have missed out on. So you don't become saddened by what you missed out on. So you strive to the best of your abilities with what you have from abilities and capabilities to strive and achieve your goals. Uh, but if you don't reach what you wanted to reach, then you do not become saddened by that and regretful about what you feel you might have achieved. ولذلك قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم تعيس عبد الدينار والدرهم والقطيفة والخميصة إن أعطي رضي إن أعطي رضي وإن لم يعطى لم يرضى ما معنى ذلك أي تعيسا انكسر وكان تعيسا حزينا مكدرا فيما هو فيه لماذا لأنه إذا كسب وأعطي فرح فرح بالدينار والدرهم والثياب الجميلة القطيفة والخميصة أنواع ثياب فإذا كانت الثياب جميلة وكسب المال فرحة وإذا لم يعطى ولم يأتي يعني المال والثياب الجميلة هنا لم يرضى فهذا كان تعيسا فيما هو فيه The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said تعيسا عبد الدينار والدرهم so Uh, so woe or how sad is the slave of the dinar and the dirham and the slave of the luxurious fabric or beautiful clothing if he is given these then he is pleased and if he is not given these then he is not pleased so this is someone as the sheikh explained Uh, he puts his priorities into, uh, the, into his desire for these provisions rather than being pleased with what Allah, whatever Allah has decreed for him from the provisions. ولذلك المسلم يتذكر قول الرحمن تعالى في صورة الأعلى بل تؤثرون الحياة الدنيا والآخرة خير وأبقى So this, this statement of Allah, as in Surah Ala, it means, indeed, you prioritize the life of this world while the hereafter is better and everlasting. La ba'sa lil muslim, alim fi al-deen, abid lillah, al-qani' bima u'tiya wa bima qasam Allah la. أن يعمل ويتاجر ليكسب المال فهذا ليس فيه تضاد ولذلك كان أبو بكر 
هو اعظم رجل بعد الانبياء والرسل كان تاجرا وكذلك عمر وكذلك عثمان وهم القدوه فلا تضاد بين الامرين and there is no harm whatsoever for the muslim uh, even if he's a person of knowledge and a worshiper and one who is content with what allah has decreed that he works and he does business so that he may earn wealth and and if he is blessed in that then he is pleased and if he is not blessed to be successful in that likewise he is pleased and we have as an example abu bakr radiyallahu anhu who was known for doing business and likewise umar and likewise uthman radiyallahu anhum jami'an all of them and so we don't see that there and we see from this that there is no contradiction there's no contradiction in the muslim being knowledgeable and a worshiper and content that he that there should be any contradiction with that and being uh, hard working and seeking to do business in order to uh, earn halal wealth لذلك قال رجل لسفيان بن عيينة يكون الرجل زاهدا وعنده مئة دينار يكون الإنسان زاهد وهو عنده مئة دينار من ذهب قال نعم انظر إلى إجابة العالم قال نعم قال وكيف ذلك يعني كيف يجمع بين القناعة وبين أنه غني فقال إن نقصت لم يغتم أي لم يكدر لم يحزن إن نقصت وإن زادت لا يفرح الفرح المخرج عن الوضع الطبيعي ولا يكره الموت لفراق المال ولا يكره الموت لفراق المال So a man said to Sufyan ibn Uyayna, rahimahullah, is it possible for a man to be a person of zuhud while he has a hundred dinar? So look to this answer from Sufyan, this great scholar of Islam, who clarifies that there is no contradiction in this. So he said, yes, in answering the question, can someone be a person of zuhud while he has 100 dinar? He said, yes. So the man asked, how? How is that? So Sufyan said, if his wealth decreases, then he does not become saddened or depressed due to that. And his, if his wealth increases, he does not become happy just because of that. And he does not dislike death just because he is worried that he will lose his wealth due to, the, due to dying. أي لا يكون القلب متعلق بالدينار والدرهم بل الدينار والدرهم في يده لا في قلبه الدينار والدرهم الدنيا في يده لا في قلبه So he does not, he does not uh, dislike death due to wanting to stay with his wealth because his wealth and his money is in his hand not in his heart these affairs of the worldly life are in his hand and not in his heart إذن إذا خسر إذا خسر هذا المال أو ربح فهو في يده لا في قلبه so whether his wealth decreases or increases it doesn't affect him because that wealth is in his hand and not in his heart. سئل الإمام أحمد قيل له هناك أربع دراهم درهم كسب من تجارة برة ودرهم من صلة الإخوان عطية من أحد الإخوان ودرهم من أجر تعليم يعني يعلم الناس الدين أو كذا فيأخذ الأجر على ذلك 
ودرهم من غلة بغداد غلة بغداد أي ما يوزع الحاكم والسلطان من الغلة أي أحب هذا المال إليك يا إمام أحمد قال أحبها إلي من تجارة برة هذا الدينار الأول من التجارة وأكرهها عندي الذي من صلة الإخوان أي عطية وأما أجر التعليم فإن 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 احتاج ليأخذه مضطر محتاج هنا يأخذ لا ابتداء وأما غلة بغداد فأنت أي للرجل تعرفها ليش تسألني ليش تسألني عنها يعني لا يأخذها الإمام أحمد لوجود بعض الشبه في ذلك نعم أفضل شيء لذلك بر الوالدين نعم. الأبر نعم. So Imam Ahmed رحمه الله was asked about uh, four dirham or four dirham so four kinds of dirham so the man asked about these four so he said a uh, a dirham from a, the business of something great is the first type and the second is a dirham given by brothers and the third is uh, a dirham that was paid due to teaching whether it's teaching the religion or something else and a dirham from that which the government distributed in that city so imam ahmed answered so the question sorry to disturb you there is four dirhams if you get the dirham from business if you got a biz a dirham from one of your friend gave it to you sake of allah third one from teaching religion religion the fourth one from the government who gave you this money okay but the government they are not straightful that's why he didn't answer clearly uh, imam ahmed so the question was about these four types of dirham which one is more beloved to you imam ahmed so he said the one most beloved to me is the one from business and the one disliked by me is the one that's given from your brothers and as for the one that is paid due to teaching the religion if if meaning if he needs it then he takes it he takes it if he needs it with that condition and as for that which was given out in the by the government of Baghdad at that time Imam Ahmed said you know about it, so why are you asking me about it? No. ولذلك كان هذا الموضوع الذي بينه النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قد أفلح من أسلم ورزق كفافا أي ليس هذا ابتداء ولكن قدر الله له بعد أن عمل وحاول وبذل ولكن كانت النتيجة له أنه أعطي كفافا قدر الله له أن يكون عيشه كفافا هذا يفلح إن قانع بذلك لا أنه يسعى إلى الكفاف. So the Sheikh explained and clarified at the end that everything that has preceded clarifies the correct understanding an explanation of this hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, which we began with, that indeed the one who fits this characteristic is successful. Whoever Islam, he's entered into Islam, and he is provided for with that which suffices him, 
and he is content with what Allah has given him. So what has proceeded from the other proofs from the Quran and Sunnah and the understanding of the righteous predecessors shows that this is not an encouragement or an order from the Prophet ﷺ that you should only strive to have what suffices you. The goal is not to have only what suffices you. Rather, all of these other proofs show that we are supposed to strive to the best of our ability. And if we are not able to reach our full, goal, our, our full goals and we are only able to attain that which suffices us and protects us from having to ask from the people, that we are content with that, with what Allah has decreed for us. Not that we only try and achieve with what is sufficient for us, and that's it. Is it clear, brothers? ولذلك يقول الرحمن جل وعلا ولا تؤتوا السفهاء أموالكم التي جعل الله لكم قياما هذا كلام الرب جل وعلا لا تعطوا أموالكم للسفيه فتضيع الأموال لأن هذه الأموال يقول الرب سبحانه وتعالى لكم قياما أي قيام الحياة قيام القوة بها Likewise Allah said in the Quran that which means and do not give your wealth to the foolish ones those whom Allah has uh, made you uh, responsible over them. Don't give your wealth to the foolish ones whom Allah has uh, made you responsible for them. أهم شيء قول الرحمن تعالى أن هذه الأموال قياما أي, أي لا تعطوا أموالكم للسهفها عموما مو فقط الأبناء أو عموما ما يعطى السفيه المال وهذه الأموال أسماها الرب جل وعلا هنا قياما قياما جعل الله لكم هذه الأموال قياما أي قيام على الحياة على متطلباتها على القوة وما شابه ذلك So the most important part of, we, of this verse that we understand in this situation and on this topic is that we don't give the foolish ones our wealth and these foolish ones are not only your children or your nephews but any foolish people you don't give your wealth to them because wealth Allah describes it as qiyam and this qiyam is that which is needed to establish yourself in this life that which is needed in order to cover the costs of this life and to cover the responsibilities and that it's that which is used to achieve all of this in this worldly life if there's any specific question uh, you could uh, click the raise hand button Uh, brother uh, Shamsullah. Uh, no, I, I did not uh, raise my hand. No. Okay. No. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. Brother uh, Omar. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Ahlan wa marhaban. Um, yes, I, I I had a question about what what do you what what do you say about to those who um you know say that they will not they will not get a you know a particular job because they because they want to study first they want to study they want to do their schooling first even though they have bills coming in they're saying well I would rather 
is that is that something praiseworthy? Is that something that they you know isn't the would the priority be to get a, a get a job like to get a you know a, a good a good paying job to sustain yourself as this opposed to the answer is it depends between a person to other person. There is a person he's qualified to plan for himself in a way that he got more education then he he work because he can handle it and he got a plan right plan and there is a person uh, he need to work because he cannot handle it so he cannot study and increase his education until he got his support for living so i cannot give you an answer for all of them it depends from case to other case. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So, let's check our brother uh, sent a question. Um, just a second. So a brother sent a question, is it permissible to run an institute for teaching Arabic, how to read the Quran and teach the Aqidah for monthly fees uh, for the sessions attended? First, you don't supposed to work in this kind of work to get money until if you need it. If you need it, yes. As Imam Ahmed said, he said, this kind of money, because you are teaching Quran and Sunnah, you take it if you need it. And my advice, go away from this direction. But if you take it, I cannot say it's haram because this is what the ulama and al imma they are answering. But if you ask me, I say, go away from this. Work and do this kind of teaching, sake of Allah. But if you need it and you take it, I will not say it's haram. Because what is the ulama said about this? But my opinion, don't do it. The brother... Uh replied he says jazakumullah khair any any other question brothers take care brothers assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh